Shade Erotica, Chapter 6. The restaurant took Jessica's breath away. I have no idea how we got to this point. I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, he convinced her to do shit. Great. It was right in the middle of London's theatre land, so anonymous from the outside that you wouldn't know it was there. A secret door opened straight into the pavement. You stepped in from a crowd and busy street, and it was like entering a different world. Is it the Batcave? One of these places where it was impossible for me immortals, well, to get a table at short notice, though Salvatore had managed it without any trouble. You know how most fan theories are terrible? Because I have a great one. Silicon is an ancient seductive demon getting this year's annually sacrifice and convincing Jessica. Was staff in places like this taught to remember the names of all their influential customers, she wondered? Or was it Salvatore's bright, oh God! Bright blue eyes and dark towering presence. Oh, I should keep a fucking count. I'll keep a count for every time his eyes are mentioned, every time his hair is mentioned, every time his figure is mentioned. There we are. So we're at one blue eyes and one physique mentioned. All right, great. She had never felt more self-conscious as they wove their way through the linen draped tables. I like to think that she's very afraid of linen. The women all look very thin and beautiful. They look it looked as if they were trying, and failing, to place her. What's a guy like him doing with a girl like her? All the same, she wondered what they'd think if they knew the truth! What the fuck's the truth? If, if the truth is that you're on a dinner date with Salvatore, and they're like wondering, Oh, it's not, how, how's that working out? No, they do know the truth. They're seeing you walk in together, and if that's the truth, they know it. They're not gonna just see you walk in together and think, Well, no, I don't think those two people would go together, therefore they're definitely not together. That's not how people work, Jessica slash Sharon Kendrick. You are amused by something! Jessica let the waiter unfold a giant napkin onto her lap. I'm just hoping I don't pick up the wrong fork. <laughs> Salvatore gave a low laugh. <laughs> It wouldn't be particularly helpful to her to know that nothing ever really scared him. Okay, Silicon, I get it. You wear a mask, but you're not fucking V. That men were there to be strong and doubts were for women. Oh, it made it easier to forget what this evening was about. What is it about? I don't remember. And to pretend that they were alone in this gorgeous restaurant for no other reason than that they liked each other. Why, why are you hoping for more? This is a normal day as far as anyone's concerned. What are you aiming for here, Jessica? What is the big secret you think this is? And don't tell me, she teased, that no food has ever tasted as good as the meal you ate that night. Okay, I'd read this dialogue, but it's fucking boring. We get an insight into Silicon's fascinating past. You remember the beautiful waitress who had slipped him her phone number and the long sensual night which had followed. You know, we're like 67 pages into this book. We've barely got anything sensual. There's something that's labeled as sexy romance. There hasn't been much sexy involved, has there? He said at Jessica at the way her hair hung in two shiny wings by the side of her face, and he felt an unexpected savage kick of lust. He wanted her, he realized, with a sharp hunger he had not felt in a long time. So you're just gonna like climb over the table and start groping her or something. All weekend he had thought about just how much he had wanted her and how her sweet flowering perfume had invaded his senses. The waiter came over with two glasses of champagne and made as if to leave them alone with their menus. There's no as if about it. He was literally leaving them with the menu, like the profession demands. Silicon waved him back, eager for the formality and constraints of the meal to be over. Yeah, he's fighting the system. He didn't even look at the menu. Jessica knew exactly why I wanted to speed through the meal. The way his face had changed. Ah, so where do you normally go to eat? Small independence mainly. Get it because she's poor and she's more of a community person and he's big business. It's a contrast, it's really subtle. Horribly aware that they were now going through the motions of having a conversation. I, you hate him? Is that- do you hate him? You're looking very delectable tonight. Am I? There was another borrowed outfit, loaned once again by Willow, but given more grudgingly this time. He's taking you out again? That's right. For dinner. She hadn't said why. She hadn't dared. What is the fucking- There's nothing daring about this dinner date, is there? When Silicon kind had of taken her to that dinner party, she did nothing to lose. She had been there acting as his girlfriend. She was complimenting going to bed with her boss. You've been complimenting that the entire book. Why is that surprising? In any way, shape, or form to you, Jessica. Why are your conflicts so boring? That's what gets me, you idiot. Had she really thought they could just sit through a meal together and then go off to have sex as if it were the most natural thing in the world? Yeah, you're human beings. It was a mistake to come here tonight, she said unhappily. Why'd you say that? Oh, come on, Silicon. You know why. I thought you wanted to eat dinner with me. Yes, I did. But maybe I was wrong to want it. Or maybe the circumstances surrounding it were wrong. Are wrong. You weren't being so coy or dismissive about it the other day. I know that. And maybe I'm regretting it now. 
Are you? When she didn't answer, his voice deepened into a silken caress. Jessica, look at me. Reluctantly, she raised her head and stared into the bright blue eyes. Ding! She could feel the inevitable leaping of her heart, the heavy sighing of excitement in her blood. I'm really scared this is going to turn into Twilight. As she looked across the table into his ruggedly handsome face. Ding! Ugh. He wasn't a stupid man, and he must have capitalized- Yes, he is. And he must have capitalized on his undeniable power over women time and time again. Reaching across the table, he took one of her hands in his, turning it over to study it. Her nails were cut short and filed down sensibly, and the skin was unusually dry. What an observation to make. These were the workers' hands, he realized with a start. Get it? They're different. We don't have to stay here, you know. But we've only just ordered. We can cancel it. Go back to my place and have something there, if you're hungry. I'm not. No. Their eyes met. Me neither. Won't it look strange if we just walk out? Who cares what it looks like? I don't spend my life seeking the opinion of others. Sometimes actions speak louder than words. But sometimes characters can literally say what they're thinking louder than actions. That's writing. He smiled as he saw her eyes darken at the unconscious eroticism. Like this book. This book, is half of it is unconscious eroticism because it doesn't seem to be lively at all. False advertising is all. Come on, he ordered huskily. Because anything was better than trying to maintain a facade that this was like a normal day. When clear it was anything but. Nope. Completely disagree. That's dumb. Or having to try and chew her way through a piece of steak. Ooh, difficult, huh? She should never have asked for this. But at least if she called a halt to it now she wouldn't get hurt. I think maybe it's best if we just forget all about tonight, she said, pulling on her coat tighter around her. I can make it my own way home on the tube. Are you crazy? You think I'm going to let you go anywhere without me tonight? The limousine purred up to a silent halt beside them and aware of the paparazzi hanging around, he pulled open the door and quickly pushed her inside. But wait, what? Paparazzi? What paparazzi? I know he's glossing up how big he is, but introduced a whole crowd of fucking photographers and reporters just as a side note. Silicon, she said as he slid into the back seat behind her and Jessica's heart began to race. That's an improper sentence. You can't take me somewhere against my will. Is he kidnapping her? He tipped her pale face upward, his thumb beneath her chin. Her grey eyes were smokier tonight, he thought, and her lips gleamed at him enticingly, and they were very trembling. Very slowly, he lowered his head and drifted his mouth across hers, feeling it shiver and hearing the instinctive little escape of her breath. It was a lingering, unhurried whisper of a kiss. <laughs> she had every opportunity to stop it, but she did not. Silicon could feel his own desire burning. I think that's called syphilis. Jessica reached up to clasp his face between both her hands. Oh, Silicon, she whispered brokenly. He stared deep into her eyes and nodded. Yes, Kara, you want me and I want you. It is so simple, isn't it? Yes, it fucking is. Thank you for finally agreeing with me, you stupid book. You were coming home with me, he said softly. Jessica stared up into the gleam of his brilliant eyes, her lips parting as he lowered his mouth to kiss her properly, this time as the car sped off towards Chelsea. It's underwhelming. I, I accidentally read ahead a tiny bit, and I read one sentence, and said sentence was, I want you to be my mistress. Oh, God.